Amen. There wouldn't be so much division in the body of Christ. If everybody would get slam dunked in the Holy Ghost, we'd be okay. But you know that there are people out there that still do not believe casting out devils laying hands on the sick and so forth, which was a command by the Lord for us to go out and do. Praying in tongues and so forth. So there are, there's still that false belief system which hinders and brings division and strife and creates religiosity and bondage instead of freedom. Amen? Instead of freedom. And what happens then is the things that are supposed to be resources become their sources. And the true Holy One who's supposed to become their source becomes their resource. And that's danger. 2 Corinthians 11. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians eleven. Is everybody there? Verse thirteen. Second Corinthians eleven thirteen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Let's read this together, please. For such as false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ, and no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing that if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. I say again, let no one think me a fool. If otherwise, at least receive me as a fool that I may also boast a little. Now listen, what is he saying? He said, listen, you better judge fruit. You better find out who you're listening from, what you're listening from. Because there are false apostles and there are false ministers proclaiming themselves to be ministers of Christ. These are deceivers of faith. They are officers of Satan's kingdom. You know, you start speaking about Satan and the demons and so forth. Many people don't want to hear it. Because they walk in fear. And fear is a spirit in itself. But God's not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and sound mind. You know, God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You might, I'm, how many people have accursed items in their house and they don't even know? And they wonder why everything keeps getting stolen, why they keep getting sick and why this and why that and whatever. And all of these accursed items that are in their home because they've never learned truth. They've been living on resources and never the source. They've created their own belief system which has become flawed and brought them into bondage. And they can't get free. They're always learning, 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 but they can never get free because it's always being stolen. The things that they're learning are promoting faith in self and not faith in God. Is everybody okay? And let me share with you again. It is happening right now. Right now, the powers of darkness, the deceivers of faith are all over. See, we are children of light. We are defenders of righteousness. We are ambassadors of the kingdom. We are servants to the anointing. And we are stewards to the mysteries of God, the truth of God. And it's our responsibility to restrain evil and expose it. That's why you're here learning. So that you can go out and kick some butt. So you can walk according to the will of God. And so that you can practice righteousness in your own life and in your own home. So that when somebody's in need, you won't guide them to a resource. You'll guide them to the source. And the source will guide them to a resource. Amen. It's time. The church is arising. The body of Christ is arising. 
There is so much deception in the world. It's, it's phenomenal. We just read it that it's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. Things that are called, that are righteous are now called evil. And things that are evil are now called righteousness according to the world. Yes, you'll be persecuted. You'll be condemned. They'll think you're nuts. Praise God, I am nuts. I'm nuts over Jesus now. I'm grateful for what he's done for me. <laughs> so you can't make a decision to ever go back. Because you'll be sucked up and taken out. The enemy is waiting to deceive your faith. He's waiting. He looks. The Bible says, make no place for the devil in any way. Do you know that one of the things that brings people into a wrong direction of faith is discouragement. And once you've come in agreement with discouragement, the enemy shows up and he begins to redirect your faith. He wants to disqualify your faith in God and put your faith in everything else. Discouragement. Amen. I would rather die with my faith in the Lord than live in my faith in anything else. Because when you die with your faith in the Lord, you will leave a legacy. If you die in your faith in anything else, your history. Hallelujah. Acts 26. 40 more scriptures will be done. <laughs> Acts 26. Now don't put your faith in that, okay? I'm just a resource. <laughs> Glory to God. Acts 26, verse 15. So I said, this is Saul speaking. Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. But rise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness of both of things which you are to have seen and of things which you have not yet revealed to you. I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you to open their what? Eyes in order to turn them from the darkness to light and from the powers of what? Satan to God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Wow. That's why you and I have been raised. That's why you're called. Listen, you've been handpicked to be here today. You may thought, well, man, I'm coming here for, for something. Or I got to be here or whatever. You've been handpicked today to be here by my father. Handpicked to be here. Ain't that something? You've been handpicked by God Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you're here because you've been handpicked. Now what you going to do with it? Are you going to leave here and just flush it? Are you going to leave here and go back to the old thing that you were doing? Or are you going to leave here and put your faith in him and start doing the new thing that he does? Amen. Go ahead. James 5. We are sanctified by faith. Woohoo! <laughs> Slap your neighbor and say, You got it! <laughs> <laughs> James chapter 5. Is everybody there? Oh, man. Cool. All right. We'll go there. 
Listen, look at this. Watch this. Ooh, nice. Verse 13. If any of you among you suffering, let him pray. Hello. What's he saying? Go to your source, man. He didn't say pick up the phone. He said go to the throne. Is any among you suffering? Pray. Go to the source. And let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is any among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Praise God. The faith. The prayer of the faith will save the sick. Jeremiah 17. So as he say, go to the source. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 17. Is everybody there? Jeremiah 17 in verse something. Five. Jeremiah 17 verse 5. Are you learning? Better than burning. And getting burned. Let's read it together. For thus says the Lord. Cursed is a man who trusts in man. Hello. Curse. Anybody want to bring a curse on yourself? Come on. Nobody here does. Come on. Raise your hand. Somebody raise your hand. You want to bring a curse on yourself. Oh, okay, good. Anybody want to go to hell? And don't tell me you've been there and back. <laughs> it may seem that way, but you weren't. <laughs> Cursed is a man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength. Whose heart, what? Departs from the Lord. In other words, he's, his faith has been redirected. For he shall be like a shrub in a desert. Nice. And shall not see when good comes. In other words, he'll always miss when God's trying to do something. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited. But blessed is a man who trusts in the Lord who makes his Lord and brings hope. He's everything. He's his source. And whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a what? Tree planted by the waters. Which spreads out its roots by the river. And will not what? Fear. Will not what? Fear. Wow. When he comes. But its leaves will be green. And he will not be what? Anxious in the year of drought. Nor will cease from what? Yielding fruit. The heart is a deceitful above all things and despitefully wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. So if the Lord is your source, that means he is, your faith is in him. Amen? Then you will be blessed. If he's not, you'll be cursed. And the curse is a legal document for a demon to access your life. Second Peter chapter 2. And then one more verse. God willing. Second Peter chapter 2. Is everybody there? Oh, hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 2. 